So, how is everyone today? I always feel privileged to be asked to speak at managers' retreats because I'm speaking to an audience of my peers. Because everyone here has achieved and has reached a certain level in the Forever Marketing Plan. Not only that, but many people are here because they've qualified to be here or they've re-qualified to be here or they've been Eagle Managers. And it's fantastic that so many people came up on stage and were recognised for those achievements. I've been involved with Forever for 19 years and I'm so proud to be associated with this life-changing company. And today I'd like to share a few thoughts with you about my journey with Forever and about why the journey really starts at Manager. I want to start by finding the clicker. Jane? Oh, you've got it. No, no, dear. <laughs> Teamwork, eh? <laughs> and my slot is, the fun begins at manager. I want you all to ask yourselves a few questions. What was your life like before you joined Forever? Just take 30 seconds to think about your life before you joined. Is there anything that stands out? Any words you'd like to write down? Fear? Boredom? Insecurity? Don't let me put words in your mind, by the way. <laughs> and what were your hopes and dreams before you came across, before you stumbled across this opportunity? I remember once somebody in my success line told me that opportunity knocks. It doesn't kick the bloody door down. <laughs> and so many people let it knock and then walk away from it. So many people achieve things with forever and then, for some reason, decide not to pursue it. So what were your hopes and dreams before you came across forever? How big could you think? And if you're like me, when I had a job, when I first started work back in, crikey, 1982, <laughs> I, um, I had huge hopes, huge ambition. And very quickly I realised that I was never going to match my ambition with what I could achieve in the jobs that I had. And I had a good job. I worked in the city. I was a banker. That's banker. <laughs> With a B. <laughs> what are your hopes and dreams now? How much bigger can you dream? How much bigger can you hope for? What can you think about life, about getting from life since you joined Forever? Has anyone here had a sea change in what they think they can get out of life since they became involved with Forever and started building a business? Just look around. Keep your hands up and look around. How many people feel that their lives have opened up, that the horizons are expanding? How did you spend your time before you joined Forever? You know, because this is a typical day. Somewhere just past the date line, the international date line, this happens at about six o'clock in the morning. The alarm goes off. I guess it starts somewhere around New Zealand. And people wake up to their alarm. And if you like most people, you'll slam it down and give yourself another five or ten minutes snooze time. That's what I used to do. And then eventually you have to drag yourself out of bed. And you get in the shower. You might make a quick cup of coffee or tea. A lot of people skip breakfast because they think skipping breakfast is good for you. And you lose weight by skipping breakfast. Of course, we know from clean nine that's not true. 
you need your shake. And then they get in the car or they walk to the bus stop or they walk to the tube station or the train station and they go into work the same way. And they get into work and they sit at their desk and they might have another cup of coffee just to think about the dread of the day coming. You might read the paper for 10 minutes before you have to start work and then you start work and then you go through to lunchtime and most people will then go and do exactly the same thing at lunchtime that they did the day before and the day before that and the day before that. And then at going home time, people do the whole journey in reverse and then you get home and you're exhausted from the day, you're stressed out, you've had an argument with your boss, you don't feel you're being valued, you're worried that you might lose your job, you've just heard that your pension's not going to be what you thought it was going to be, you go home, you open a bottle of wine and you sit in front of the stupid box. And you watch the stupid box, you might fall asleep on the sofa after having a a sofa supper. And then you might wake up and think, okay, I'll drag myself off to bed. And then you gradually fall asleep. And then at six o'clock the next morning, and you do the whole thing all over again. That's what my life was like before I joined Forever. I didn't realize there was a life beyond that because I had, even at the age of 32 when I joined Forever, I didn't realize that there was more life to get, more life to experience. But how do you spend your time now? Who's got more quality time to spend with their friends, with their family, on the hobbies and interests they enjoy? Who's got more time to spend getting fit, keeping fit? Who's got more time to indulge the hobbies that they want to do? Bob's a golfer. I'm far too young to play golf. <laughs> so how is your journey to manager? Easy? Tough? Long? Short? How many people got to manager in six months or less? Stand up if you got to manager in six months or less. Wow. Look at this. Jane, stand up. Stand up if you got to manager in five years or more. Well, there are people who took more than five years to get to manager. And what's wrong with that? Maybe their journey was a bit tougher than the people who got there in six months. Actually, I think they were both the same toughness. I think that you can either do the quick, painful route or the slow, painful route. (laughs) Both of them are painful, but as I always like to say, and I assume I'm only talking to the ladies here, would you rather have the hairs on your legs removed by waxing? Or would you rather have them plucked out one by one with tweezers. <laughs> Both are painful. Which would you rather go for? What was the most important thing you did to get to manager? Write it down. What was the most important thing you did to get to manager? And what have you learned from that? you know, I speak to some people and they say, the most important thing I did to get to manager was X. And then I say, well, are you sharing that with the people that join your business? Oh, no. Oh, no, because I think it might put people off if I tell them that. So what's changed for you since you went manager? What's different about your life since you achieved the position of manager? How does it feel knowing that when you walk into a room full of forever people that you've reached a position that people recognize 
as being successful. How does that make you feel? Has anyone ever experienced that in a previous job or career? Or was this really the first time that you'd had that kind of experience, to walk into a room full of people knowing that you're recognised for the success you've achieved? Not being given, but achieved. And what have you achieved since then? How many new qualifiers are there in the room? Brand new managers in the room. And how many requalifiers are there in the room? And how many eagle managers are there in the room? Wow. So I would guess probably two-thirds of the audience are here because you've qualified to be here, which is absolutely fantastic. And you should be as proud of your achievement as Bob is, as Rex is, as all of us on the President's Club are. Because it's a great achievement to be here this weekend. The sad thing that I've noticed, though, and I know Jane and John have noticed the same thing in many of the leaders, is that lots of people get to the position of manager, and then for some reason they seem to stop. And yet for me, getting to manager is when Pandora's box is opened. Because getting to manager, you can achieve car plan, eagle manager, global travel, chairman's bonus. And yet, so many people get to manager and never achieve any of those. One of the things I love about Forever is that we are a transparent company. As soon as you join Forever, we will tell you what you need to do to achieve all of these. And I'm sure many of you have the qualifications requirements imprinted somewhere in your circuitry. I just want to share some of these experiences. I want to start by talking about car plan. Stand up if you're a car plan qualifier. Wow. That's fantastic. Thank you. Now, here's an interesting question. Stand up if you're going to qualify for car plan this year. Wow. Bob, have you got all their names and numbers? Good. How does it feel to go across stage and be given a, a car plan and to get an extra 200 and 63 to 525 pounds a month. Do you know I've been getting 525 pounds a month extra for 18 years with Forever. And I know John and Jane are the same. Eagle manager. What does it feel like to go to the global rally, which it will be from now on, and be recognised as an eagle manager in front of your peers? What will it feel like to go to Sardinia next May on the first ever global manager retreat? Who's going on the, global, the eagle manager global retreat? Stand up if you're going as an eagle manager to Sardinia next year. Wow, come on, let's give them a big round of applause. And what about chairman's bonus? What difference can a chairman's bonus check make to you and to your family? I was in the gym this morning, not showing off, I just was, and I was watching the television, and it was talking about, luckily there were subtitles because I didn't have any earphones, and it was talking about the average age that people get on the property ladder these days. Does anyone know what that is? 35. The average age for people to get on the property ladder these days is 35. 
Do you know, I bought my first flat 28 years ago at the age of 24. And it was usual for people who were going to get on the property ladder to be getting on it in their early to mid-20s. 28 years ago. Today, it's 35. Do you know, today you need a minimum 19% deposit. Now, the average house, apartment, flat, whatever you want to say, cost in the UK is somewhere around £100,000. That means somebody has to save getting on for 20 grand as a deposit to get on the property ladder. And if you live in London, forget it. What about a kid who leaves university with a decent qualification, gets a reasonable salary, maybe 25, 30 grand a year? How long do you think it's going to take them to save 20 grand for a deposit? Or if you're in London, it's about 200 to 250,000 for a starter flat. So they're going to have to save 50,000. How long will it take a kid today leaving university on 25, 30, even 35,000 to save 50,000 pounds to get on the property ladder? What difference could that chairman's bonus check make, not just to you, but to your family? How many people in here have achieved... I'm going to say the word profit share. I'm not allowed to, but I am because that's what it used to be. It's now called chairman's bonus. Stand up if at any stage in your forever career you've received a chairman's bonus or a profit share check. Stand up. <laughs> Who thinks some of these checks could be life-changing. I wonder what it was like for Paul and Claire Baradell to pick up a cheque for nearly 40,000 euros. I wonder what it was like adding the security for their two boys. I wonder what it was like. Actually, I can't say that. I know what it was like. <laughs> Stupid boy. I wonder what it was like for Lino Barbosa, who used to be a mechanic, by the way, and he always says, he had a little garage, he loved cars, hated people. <laughs> Not a great recipe for a successful business. He changed himself. He made the choice to change himself. Jane talked earlier about making choices. He chose to change himself as a person. I wonder what it was like for John and Jane to pick this check up. And many, many more that we've seen them achieve. How life-changing could that be? And you know, the funny thing is that everyone can access a chairman's bonus check. It's not exclusive. We know what we need to do. 700 case credits in non-manager, 150 of which needs to be done in the calendar year, so new. You need to be on car plan and you need to have a manager leg that does 600 case credits in total. It's not difficult to know what the qualification is. It's doing the qualification. It's making the choice. It's making the decision to do it. And what about travel? When I look at this picture, I think of the amount of time that Jane was able to spend with her mother because they were both involved in forever. We traveled the world together. We had an incredible time. And the legacy that Dorothy left means that Bill has been retired from forever now for four years, Jane's father, and last year, taking away profit share, he earned more last year than he's earned in any year previous. Just think about the legacy that's been left. It's fun. What a hat. <laughs> what a fish. Cheeky <laughs> trappy there. Hey. Jane, yours is always bigger, darling. <laughs> We've all come to recognize that. We had a fantastic time. Do you know, we caught, all of us caught a fish. We just went out, we were in, um, where were we? Mexico. What's the place called? Baja, California. What was the name of the little? Cabo San Lucas. We went out early one morning from Cabo San Lucas, 
And we just had an incredible day. And we were there because forever took us there. It was a joy. Sometimes we have to face our fears. Does anyone know what that is? That's not just any old shark. That is a great white shark. And about 10 minutes after I took that photo, I was in the water, in a cage, with great white sharks. That was my choice. Because I'd always, I loved diving, I loved the water, I was brought up next to the sea, so I surfed, I kayaked, I dived from a very early age, and it was one of my goals always to be able to be in the water with great white sharks. And I was in South Africa, and I was there because of forever. I couldn't have afforded to go otherwise. They took me to South Africa, and I went to a place called Hansby, I hope I pronounced that right, where they have something called Shark Alley. And there was a cage, and you get in the cage. You don't have um, tanks. You just go in with a snorkel and with uh, a wetsuit on and a mask, obviously. And the, you're in this cage, and the, and the top of the cage is open, and you're looking at the captain, and you said, OK, there's a shark coming. Because what they do is they lay a scent trail in the water. All this nonsense about chucking dead fish in the water is, is not true, because that would just excite the sharks too much. What they do is they have a big bag with lots of fish heads and stuff, and they lay a scent trail in the water, and any great white shark that crosses it finds it and then starts following it. They don't get too excited. So I was there, and you're in the cage, and the the captain says, okay, well, there's a shark coming there. So you go down, and there's like a little bit here that you can put your hands through, and then there's a bit where your feet go on the edge of the cage like this. And you're looking in the direction he's pointed, and you suddenly see, coming out of the gloom towards you, you see this thing. And... Because we've been programmed, because of things like Jaws and all the stories you hear about killer sharks, your heart just goes into overdrive. And I saw this shark, and it was massive. It wasn't just big. I think it was about four and a half meters long. But it was a female. It was massive. It was huge this way as well. And as it came towards me, I was looking at it. And it was just curious. And I was like this. And I suddenly realized, oh, shit. (laughs) And I went back inside the cage. But it just, it wasn't vicious. It wasn't trying to attack me. It was just curious. And I did it because I wanted to face up to my fear. I had the choice to face up to my fear to be in the water with a great white shark. And I did it. And I did it because of forever allowed me to. And we did so much on that trip. Have you ever stroked a cheetah? Have you ever been to one of Forever's resorts in South Africa where the hippos, where you have a hippo warning? Have you ever ridden elephants in Zambia near the Victoria Falls or fed an elephant? Anyone here ever been to the Victoria Falls? I was there because of Forever. Who's been to the Victoria Falls? Wow, you've got to go there. And we flew over it. Forever even took me to a place that brought back memories because I have a cine film of me when I'm two years old on my father's shoulders next to this very statue. Because I lived in Africa when I was a kid. My dad died in 1998 and in, in a funny kind of way, when I went back and saw this statue, it brought me back full circle. And I was there because Forever took me there. We had an amazing time. And you make friendships in forever. I can't begin to tell you how many people (laughs) I've met in forever who are completely barking mad. (laughs) It's amazing who you bump into by the swimming pool. (laughs) I love that notice. Shall I read it to you? Want me? For the best insider outdoor experience, see our pool talent. (laughs) This is a business where friendships last forever. I had to put all the ones of Ulf in fancy dress. Ulf is the managing director of Scandinavia, if you don't know. But what a business. 
What a business that takes you around the world. That was just Africa. This is the trip that Jane was talking about to the Dominican Republic, where we ended up picking aloe leaves, harvesting aloe leaves, and then going back to the factory and hand filleting them. We worked. We were there at dawn. We saw the sunrise over a 5,000-acre aloe plantation. And if you don't know what it looks like, it's as far as the eye can see. This was us in full harvesting mode. And this was us back at the processing plant, where we rode back on the, in the trailer on the back of the tractors. And we hand filleted. And that guy sitting down there has just won a watch because they had a competition for us. They told us that we had to, that they could win a competition, the fastest person to hand fillet a leaf. And he was that person. And so he won a watch. And they were all so excited. And let me tell you, they love forever. We chatted with some of the people that work in the fields and in the factory. Do you know that there are two whole towns in the Dominican Republic that are there financially because of Forever. Because Forever employs so many people in the fields and in the, pro- in the factory, in the processing plant, that the economy is supported in those two towns by the Forever incomes that those people generate. Do you know they told us that they get uniforms? That they work a four-day week because it's back-breaking work and there's even a scholarship fund for their kids to go to university. And the clincher for me, when people always ask me, whether we treat our workers well or not, is that there is a waiting list for people to join. There is a waiting list for people who want to work in the fields or in the processing plant with forever. Jane gave you lots of facts and figures earlier. Let me tell you, emotionally, there is as much for you to love forever as there is intellectually. When was the last time your company took you on a cat, and sailed you out into the ocean, into the Caribbean. It's amazing what you can find on the floor (laughs) of the sea. Because we had a competition. We were split into teams on the Eagle Summit, and we had to free dive down and collect aloe bottles that they'd dumped on the seabed. I think Magnus and I were the only ones to do it. It is flattering, Jane. I love that picture. Because we had so much fun. Forever is a fun company. You've got to have fun in this company. Kim struggled, but he did it. I love diving. And you know, I've been diving all over the world, thanks to Forever. And it's amazing who you bump into on those boats. A few years ago, we went to Lake Tahoe, and that was the sun setting. I took um, a few of my forever friends there. I think I took Ash- I think Ashley and Louise were there. I think Paul and Claire, because I'd found some beavers. All right, <laughs> and I took them to see the beavers, and we watched the sunset. Look at that lake in the background. Has anyone here ever been to Lake Tahoe? It's the most beautiful place. And we were there because of Forever. Because Forever took us there on the Silver Tour. And we went kayaking. We had some great times. We went to some fantastic restaurants. It was just wonderful. I spent a day going bird spotting with Andy and Vivian and um, Peter and Hazel. We went off bird spotting and we had a great day. We climbed up into the mountains, and I went swimming in a little mountain lake up there. And managers' retreats have been fun, too. (laughs) I didn't expect to have my prostate examined at the managers' retreat. (laughs) Who was at the European rally in Vienna? It's amazing. You can get access to everyone that you want to. If you don't know who this is, on the left, you can see a lovely lady called Jane Leach. Next to her is Ruth. That's Rex's wife. 
And then the lady the other side is Sonia, Rex's daughter, who the skin care and cosmetics are named after. And that's her husband. Rex is absolutely incredible. He's the most amazing man I've ever met. I've traveled the world with Rex. Do you know, he will not get on a bus or a plane or any kind of transport until all the distributors are on and all your luggage is on. I've seen Rex humping luggage into the underneath of buses because he cares. Now, this is a billionaire we're talking about. This isn't any old bloke. This is a billionaire. This is a billionaire who doesn't need to do this. This summer we were in Phoenix, which is where the Super Rally was, and there were maybe three and a half, four thousand people there. They bust us up to the home office, and we ha- could have a tour of the home office. And guess who was in the home office having his picture taken in his office? Rex. And let me tell you something. At half past seven, which is when we got there in the evening, we'd had a rally during the morning up to about one in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon. And we, then we got bussed up there and then we would, waited, we queued literally for an hour and a half, two hours to get in. And Rex was in his office having his picture taken. And we got there at 7.30, the Brits, because um, I kind of gathered a group of people and we all went together. And his staff were saying, Rex, you've got to go back to the hotel and rest, you're tired. And Rex said, one more photo, one more photo, one more photo. Do you know, Rex was there till 11 o'clock, 11 p.m., having his picture taken with every distributor that wanted one. Not because he needed to, but because he wanted to and he cared enough to stay till every single last distributor who'd gone to the home office had had their picture taken with him. You get excitement in forever. We were in the Bahamas last year in the Silver Tour and a hurricane came. And most people decided to leave because I'm very stupid. I decided... I'd never seen a hurricane. (laughs) And I probably never would have the opportunity again. So I thought, I'll just stick around and see what happens. And it was very interesting. We didn't actually have to go into the shelter, but there were some very, very strong winds. But we had fun. The hotel we stayed in, I think, was called the Atlantis. And I think they've got one in Dubai as well. It's just the most amazing resort. Friendships, meals. I can't tell you the number of great meals I've had in forever, the number of great bottles of wine, the number of occasions I've been able to spend time with Rex or with Lino. We had a steam train on the rally in Vienna that took the World Rally qualifiers up to Neuschwanstein Castle, which is the castle Walt Disney based his fairy tale castle and it's also the one that was used in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang the world rally this year was to Hong Kong Sanders always taking the pictures you don't see many pictures of him these are the kind of things that I've experienced (laughs) with forever if you've never been to Hong Kong I've been tipped that it will be one of the locations for a global rally at some stage in the future as will Rio. And that little thing you can see on top of the peak on the right is the Statue of Christ. What an amazing sky. And that's looking down at Ipanema Beach. You know the girl from Ipanema? I've been to Brazil twice. Isn't that a great shot? Swimming in the Amazon. It's not the piranhas you want to look out for. It's little fish that swim up your willy and open up like an umbrella. (laughs) Seriously. I tied a plastic bag over the end of mine, I can tell you. (laughs) 
Amazing. This is RJ and Annie. Friendships. Big bears. Who's going to Hawaii next year? Well, go on a flight and make sure you do a tour of Oahu, the island, and they will fly you in in exactly the same way the Japanese torpedo bombers came in to bomb Pearl Harbor, which is where this is. Experiences with your kids. These are my three children. I was able to take them to Hawaii because of forever. These are memories that will stay with us forever. That's my not-so-little baby. Sunset. Ella and George's first ever scuba dive, which I was able to do with them. And throughout the times with Forever, I've been all over Africa. I know, nice hat. I've been given lots of cash. I've been up to the Arctic Circle. I've been across to Asia. I've been to Australia. I've met the most incredible people. There are benefits to going on rallies. Crikey, I've got hair. Wow. What do you mean, yeah? <laughs> Who was that? This is an amazing place. I can't begin to tell you, flying into Vegas on a cruise ship, paid for by forever, Paul Baradell singing karaoke, which is a sight to be seen and heard. All of this is forever. Great name for a ship, don't you think? Now that's what I call a rally get-up. Kennedy Space Center, where we were able to see the Apollo moon landing command center. San Francisco. Ephesus in Turkey, sitting on the Roman loos. Rex getting well into it. John and Jane at sunset on a beach in Brazil. Tasting raw aloe vera in the aloe fields, and that's the result. <laughs> Finding aptly named beer, arrogant bastard ale. <laughs> Visiting the pyramids in Mexico. So, this is available for each and every one of you. And if any of those photographs, they weren't just holiday snaps, they were forever snaps. They were taken with friends. And what I'd like to do now is ask Tracy Pickles up just to give you a taste of what it's like to be an achiever and a manager in forever. Please help me welcome Tracy Pickles. Everyone. To take a place. Is that it? Morning, everyone. The choice Fantastic. Of the choice our fun of started at 8 01. One top three in North Why? Future, little because we got in the car and it's our yearly and date. And the vision the and the treat. fun no, that we have girl, already so had in um, having <clears> an architect here ten years ago. It, and we know how to take the time checks over the next Bill three to five years. We pay a job that he absolutely loved. And I uh, work 40 like hours a week no, from home have done some work on it. in a job um, that, but that was going to me didn't really enjoy it. have been able to do and the gave fun me my own independence to have along the way. I'm so grateful and my brother and all came along and showed us the forever opportunity yeah. and what it gave me was the because opportunity Because that was the manager's retreat that we went to in Chester. Um, and that and actually my, my first manager's retreat was in Spain a few years ago. Which was to get to manager. And it was the and manager's the retreat that, that actually I helped them in 18 months. Put up my umbrella and see actually and what was underneath there. And for the last five, six years, that's me represent fun. Phoenix was two months old. 
and three I years was having ago, fun with her, had my little then, girl for me. It's the most special thing that's ever come into my life. I thank forever for that. And thank it's God she did because she gave me that to, mojo. To, she um, gave me the hold. reason. I put that picture in because Sue is a very special part of my life. She's most not here today. Amazing fun. Um, that we've but had that in our life, really and I thank is what, forever for what that. We are about in forever. So um, what I want to do I, so uh, this week, I don't know about you, but we've had a bit of rage in Leeds. Um, anybody what else? I want to ask you before we leave And is I've used what's underneath my your umbrella. purple umbrella this week. Do you know what there is? A few is times that you have And it got me thinking, to. and please don't be like my umbrella. I out on a lot of what was I was walking down to, to, to preschool and the spokes underneath um, my so umbrella. So please take from this today what we're what forever has to deliver. A magic and the canopy to my umbrella is not the fun that forever can give each and every one of us if you're prepared to put the spokes into place. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to share with you what we have underneath and have had underneath our umbrella over the last three to five years and what it's given for us. <clears throat> I put this picture up here because it just represents for Phil and I fun. We love skiing. Um, we've also got in there one of our tea, team managers, uh, Marco and Deanna. They used to work out of London but have now gone and built in a short space of time, in four months, a manager business over in Colombia. And we had the opportunity to go out with them early this year and take our little girl Phoenix with us and go skiing. We shared their, their, uh, their apartment with them and we were on the slopes within two minutes. And we were able to afford to pay for Phoenix to have ski lessons. Thank you to forever. To forever. But we had the most amazing time and that was just before they left to go to Colombia. And we were able to do that. Phil. Hi, my name is um, Phil Pickles and um, you see here having a bit of fun. I'd like to sort of just share a little story with you. My, my background's in the medical equipment industry, and Trace said I, I loved my job back then. Um, I actually didn't like it as time went on and forever got more fun and more enjoyable. Um, I was talking to um, a very senior business person last week, and they were saying what they love to do is to be able to get home and spend 15 minutes a night with their daughter before she goes to bed. And I thought it was a bit sad, um, because that was his highlight of the day. What Forever's enabled me to do as a father is to actually have the choice to spend um, every breakfast and every evening meal with my daughter, which a lot of men um, and women who are working very busy lives can't afford to do. And um, this is something that we, um, that we had with one of our, one of our profit share checks. Um, after the super rally, we always stay on for a little bit. And um, Tracy found a lodge in the middle of a forest with a, a hot tub. And... What we've been able to do is really spend not just time with our daughter, but actually take her wherever we're going. And we know that when she grows up, um, she's going to become um, worldly wise and, and have a different view to most of her peers around us. It's gorgeous, because one of her phrases that she's picked up just by being around us in forever is, never, 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 never quit. And she often says, never, 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 never quit. She came along into our life three years ago, and as I say, I'm so grateful she did. We named her Phoenix, and no, it wasn't on the Phoenix Rally, for those of you who, who always ask me. <clears throat> um, but every time I look into her eyes, she, the reason we called her Phoenix is because it was our first Super Rally destination um, when we first went to Phoenix, and it gave us some incredible memories, some incredible fun times with some amazing people, but also... For those of you who are a mum, and you'll know how hard it is, and sometimes it's really guilty leaving them at night when they're little tiny ones. But every time I look into her eyes, I know the reason why I'm doing it. So it just drives me forward. This, I love these photographs. Why? Because this photograph was taken this year in Budapest. And you can see on our faces how amazing it was to pick up I think our biggest profit share check that we ever had, well it is. But I left my job 10 years ago on nine and a half thousand pounds a year. And over the last three years, our profit share checks have been over 20,000 euros. So is it worth working for? Yes. Do you know what's underneath your umbrella? Had I not seen it, we wouldn't have been able to have the access to this. And it's, to see Lindsay and Mike, our first Profit Share qualifiers, has been one of the most fun, amazing experiences. And we had such a fun time. Thank you to Forever. 
This is last year when we went um, to Virginia after we went to Washington. We were able to go hiking, which we absolutely love. And we were able to take Phoenix with us. And you know, for us, that is represents freedom and fun. Um, and she is just, she, she loves it. She's part of it. And we love that. Now, some of you may look at that and think, that's not fun. Because <laughs> when I put it up, I thought, hmm, same for myself too. But you know, this year, or in December last year, we were able to choose, thank you to the vision that Forever has had, to choose our own home. You might not look at it like that. But it's given us the vision to take a place that we absolutely love, the choice of our village, with the choice of our school, one of the top three in North Yorkshire, little primary school, and the vision and the fun that we have already had in having an architect in, designing it, and we know that our profit share checks over the next three to five years are going to pay for that to be fully converted. Um, It doesn't look like that now, by the way. We have done some work on it. Um, But that, to me, represents what we have been able to do and the fun that we've been able to have along the way. And it all started here. Because that was the manager's retreat that we went to in Chester. Um, And actually, my first manager's retreat was in Spain a few years ago. And it was the manager's retreat that actually helped me put up my umbrella and see actually what was underneath there. That, to me, represents fun. Phoenix was two months old, and I was having fun with her even then. And to me, I thank Forever for that. It's got some amazing qualities to, 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 um, to behold. I put that picture in because Sue is a very special part of my life. She's not here today. Um, but that really, again, is what, what we are about in Forever. Um, so I've put a few photos there for you to enjoy. Um, but what I want to ask you before we leave is what's underneath your umbrella? Do you know what there is that you have access to? And please don't be like me. I missed out on a lot of what was underneath my umbrella for a few years. Um, So please take from this today what you want and make your umbrella a magical umbrella. Thank you very much. Jane said earlier, we have a choice, and we do. And in this country, sometimes it's too easy. We're never going to starve. We can always have a roof over our heads. We can always find clothes. And our children will get educated. We don't have water that might give us cholera or typhoid. We don't have food that we have to pick off rubbish tips to eat. And sometimes I think we are too easy with ourselves. And when I say these things, I always am talking to myself as well. And I would just urge you to think about how difficult it is to build a business in some other countries. We picked up some postcards when we were in South Africa a few years ago, and this was one of them, and this absolutely blew me away, because this is a real photograph. This isn't a model. This isn't staged. Somebody took this picture with somebody walking away down the road from the product centre. No transportation. Box on the head, off to build a business with forever. There's a guy in my business in South Africa called Foreman Umbertani, and he built a business with forever. And he started by buying one bottle of aloe vera from his sponsor. He walked 15 kilometers, sold it, walked 15 kilometers back again, bought two bottles, and then walked 10 kilometers to sell those two bottles and then walked back and got some more. He now makes about 40 to 50,000 rand a month, which is about four to 5,000 pounds. He's on the car plan. He's been on the rally. He's achieved profit share. 
This is happening all over the world with Forever. Forever is changing lives, but it only changes the lives of people who are prepared to put in the work, the effort, and most important, to change themselves. And sometimes I think we are not willing enough to undergo that transformation that we need to go through in order to achieve success. And I'd like to urge you to think about the Pandora's box that Forever is now prepared to open for you at this wonderful position of manager. Car plan, eagle manager, global travel, chairman's bonus. Far too many people miss out. Why should you? Why not build yourself the business that you're proud of and achieve all of the incentives. There's no limit to the number of people Rex will take on the global rally. There's no limit to the number of chairman's bonus checks he'll give away or the number of car plan qualifiers he'll give you. He wants everyone to achieve these things. I urge you this weekend to sit down and set some serious goals. To decide. Not just set the goals, but make a decision to do it. Because in my experience, it's when you make the decision to do it that the universe starts changing. It's when you make the decision to do it that everything starts swinging into line. All the planets go into alignment and suddenly things start happening magically. When you make that decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so looking forward to hearing... The rest of the trainings, I'm looking forward to the rest of this weekend. I know we're going to get dirty, but I know we're going to have fun. I mean that in the literal sense, by the way. <laughs> but don't just have fun this weekend. At some stage, sit down and have a serious think about what you want to get from forever. Because Pandora's box is ready to be opened for you. Thank you.